Hello there again, and we're going to take a look at eigenvectors, but in a slightly kind of backwards direction here. Uh, so let's go back to this uh, flip uh, transformation we saw before from R2 to R2 that flips around the y-axis. Okay, and let's think about the eigenvectors of that transformation, or if you want, the eigenvectors of the matrix that encodes that transformation. So again, we're flipping around the y-axis here. Let me get the right pen here. Flipping around the y-axis. So uh, there was there were a couple of eigenvectors that we saw. One of them was this one here. Let's make this uh, uh, the vector one zero. Okay, so that was an eigenvector for this transformation because when I apply the transformation, the only thing that happens is a scalar multiple. Here's the transformation of that vector here over here, t of uh, one zero. Okay, it didn't really move it; it just flipped it, but didn't really move it out of place. Another eigenvector for that matrix for that transformation was the vector zero one because the transformation doesn't move that thing at all. Now, going back to the idea of matrices, I kind of get my transformations and matrices confused because we can think of them in either way we want. Um, remember that transformation, the flip transformation, was given by this matrix. Okay, and these two guys are eigenvectors because when I multiply each of them by this matrix, I get just a scalar multiple of the input. Uh, so, for example, t of uh, one zero, as you can see on the picture, is just negative one times one zero. Okay, um, and the thing is though, this is not the only eigenvector. These two guys are not the only eigenvectors for this matrix. Uh, very simply, for example, uh, if I look at the vector, say, two zero, this guy out here. Now, if I apply, you can do this either way. Uh, you can either multiply by this matrix or just think about the transformation, the motion that's being taken place. Uh, the transformation of that vector would be over here. It would be minus two zero, okay? So it's another vector, it's another eigenvector uh, with the same scalar multiple applied to it. Uh, in fact, any vector you can see on this x-axis is going to be an eigenvector for this matrix. So there are millions and millions and millions of eigenvectors for this particular matrix, but they all have the same scalar multiple out here uh, when you apply the transformation, negative one. Try it yourself, pick any vector on the x-axis, run it through this transformation or multiply it by this matrix and you will get negative one times your input. So we're going to take, we're going to now focus in on the scalar itself so if, if this scale, if this negative one here is special because there are vectors out there so that the transformation of those vectors is negative one times those vectors. So we're gonna say that lambda equals negative one is an eigenvalue, an eigenvalue of my matrix negative one, zero, zero, one, okay? So one, zero is an eigenvector with an eigenvalue of negative one, we would say. Likewise, zero, one, uh, one of the things we saw was that the transformation of zero, one uh, is itself. Nothing happens to vectors that are on the y-axis. So transformation of zero, one is one times zero, one. So that makes zero, one an eigenvector with an eigenvalue of plus one. And in fact, anything on the y-axis is also going to be a, an eigenvector for your matrix with an eigenvalue of one. So let's go and do another example here where we have a different matrix and see if we can spot whether or not certain numbers are eigenvalues. Okay, so the matrix I have in mind here is B equals, you can't call everything A, right? Zero, one, two, minus one. So uh, I'm not going to look for, in the previous screencast, we, were, we threw a bunch of vectors at this matrix and asked, is this an eigenvector? Is that an eigenvector? We're going to kind of switch gears and think about certain numbers coming at this matrix and ask if they're eigenvalues for the matrix. So um, let's take a look at and see if, uh, for example, question, is um, lambda equals 1 an eigenvalue for this matrix? Okay, now I'm going to just skip right to the answer and say the answer is absolutely yes, because here is a vector that I have cooked up beforehand that uh, satisfies a certain property. Okay, the vector I'm thinking of here is the vector 1, 1. Okay, now take 1, 1 times this matrix here, and let's see what we get. I get 0 times 1 plus 1 times 1, that's 1, and then 2 times 1 plus negative 1 times 1, and that's a 1 as well. So here is a, a vector, let's call it V for a second, and this is V, such that B times V equals 1 times V, okay? So that tells us a couple of things. First of all, V is an eigenvector for this matrix, 
and one is an eigenvalue for that matrix. Just like one was an eigenvalue for uh, zero, one in the other transformation we looked at. Now here's another thing, here's another vector to play with. Uh, let's call this one, uh, let's just also call it V, and it is the vector negative one, two. Okay, now check this out. If I take B times V this time, okay, it's the same B as before, zero, one, two, negative one times this v, it's a negative 1, 2, okay, I am going to get, see, 0 times negative 1, and then plus 1 times 2, so there's a 2 in the first entry, 2 times negative 1, that's a negative 2, plus negative 1 times 2, it's a negative 4. Now, if you note this and this, um, b times v1, that's this, is actually equal to negative 2 times v, okay? So that tells you, again, that this v is, again, an eigenvector, And also, this time we learned something new, that negative 2 is an eigenvalue. Okay, so one, negative 1, 2 is an eigenvector for that matrix with an eigenvalue of negative 2. And 1, 1 is an eigenvector for that matrix with an eigenvalue of plus 1. And also remember, uh, these aren't the only two eigenvalues, okay? Anything, uh, so that means that if I were thinking of this matrix as a transformation from R2 to itself, if I look at the vector 1, 1, it is locked in place after I transform it. And that's going to be true for anything that is a scalar multiple of 1, 1. So that 1, 1 will trace out a line, uh, and any vector on that line will have the same eigenvalue. Likewise, if I look at negative 1, 2, uh, switch my color here, negative 1, 2, that would be uh, something like pointing up this direction. Okay, When I transform it, it's just going to flip it and stretch its length out by a factor of 2. That's what this is telling me. If I take b times v1, it's a negative 2 times v1. So here's the transformation of v, of v over here. Uh, and that's going to be true for any vector that lies on this little red line that I'm creating. Okay, So these lines here contain all the vectors that have eigenvalue negative 2. Lambda equals negative 2 here. And this blue line up here contains all the eigenvalues that have, uh, eigenvectors, I should say, that have eigenvalue 1. And so we're going to call, I don't have room to write this on the screen, but we're going to call this line here. Notice it's a line in R2 through the origin, which makes it a subspace of R2. So this line here that contains all vectors, all eigenvectors with eigenvalue plus 1, is called the eigenspace corresponding to lambda equals 1. And this red line here, also a line through the origin, and uh, it contains all the vectors that are eigenvectors with an, with an eigenvalue of lambda equals negative 2, and that is called the eigenspace for lambda equals negative 2. So we don't focus on specific eigenvectors a lot of the times. We focus on the eigenvalues because there are millions of eigenvectors that have that eigenvalue, but they all lie on the same basic subspace, and that's called the eigenspace for that eigenvalue. Last thing we'll do here is let's start with another matrix here. Let's uh, let this matrix be called A equal to negative 4, 3, negative 6, 5. And I'd like to know uh, is, uh, is a 2 an eigenvalue for this matrix. Now, in the previous example, um, I asked the same kind of question. Here's a number. Here's a matrix. Is this number an eigenvalue? Uh, for the matrix, and I said, sure it is, because here's this vector that I somehow happen to have in my pocket. Well, suppose I don't have that. How do I know whether 2 is an eigenvalue or not? Well, let's find out. If 2 were an eigenvalue, there would have to be a vector x such that a times x is equal to 2 times x. There would have to be an eigenvector corresponding for it. Now, one thing about this is this equation always has a solution, namely x equals the 0 vector. So I don't really care about the 0 vector. I'm really kind of interested is in the question, are there non-zero vectors that uh, satisfy that equation? Can I find a non-zero vector that makes this equation true? If so, that's then 2 would be an eigenvalue because that x would be an eigenvector. So let's see if I can solve that equation. Well, I'm going to move the uh, 2x onto this side here. Minus 2x equals the zero vector. And now let's see what I can do algebraically. Now, I'd like to factor out an x out of this picture here. So I'm just going to tentatively write this. Okay, now if I stop right here, this would look like good algebra 1, but in linear algebra it wouldn't make a lot of sense because A here is a matrix and 2 is a number, and I have no idea what uh, a matrix times a number is. 
But what I can think about is uh, this, if I put two times the two by two identity matrix, this makes a lot of sense. Because right here, this two X here, I could just as easily have written two times the identity matrix times X, that's the same thing. So if I factor out an X, it's not a two here, it's a two times the identity matrix. So let's take a look at what that identity, this little matrix here in the parentheses really looks like. Well, I'm gonna write A here, that's negative four, three, negative six, five. And two times the identity matrix would be two, zero, zero, two. Now let's take a look at this for a second. Uh, let's do the subtraction that shows up here. Negative four minus two is negative six. Three minus zero is three. Negative six minus zero is negative six. And five minus two is three. Okay, now what we were trying to find out is whether this equation, and therefore this equation, has any non-zero solutions. Now that equation right there is the homogeneous equation. A minus two I two times X equals zero. That makes it a homogeneous equation. So this has non-zero solutions if and only if the matrix you're using is non-invertible. Non-invertible. If uh, this matrix were invertible, the only solution to this equation would be x equals zero. If this is non-invertible, there should be non-trivial solutions, and those are the ones I'm interested in. So let's go down here and think about whether this matrix, which is a minus two i two, is non-invertible. And we have a really quick way to do that using the determinant. Okay, so the determinant of this matrix is negative 18 minus negative 18, and that is equal to zero. So what I get to conclude here is in fact that my matrix is non-invertible, and therefore I have non-zero solutions to this equation, and therefore the answer here is yes. Two is an eigenvalue because there is some vector out there that makes this equation true, and I can I know that because at bottom this is a this is a system I have to solve, and the coefficient matrix has determined zero. So there is a there this is actually an eigenvalue.